uh, Scott Young once said, uh, people don't buy class in paper, they buy emotions. Uh, and that really resonated with me because we buy albums and we buy music, like we, we do it to support the artists, but like we really want to hear the music and the, the emotions that like really capture us when we're listening to it, like the anger, like the, the sadness that we listen to, when we, the feel, sadness that we feel when we listen to it, uh, and all those emotions there. And uh, by the way, Scott Young, I have no idea who the guy is, but I just really like the quote. Uh, so today I'm going to be talking about uh, new age album sales, and not new age, like the way you said it. Like it's, it sounds weird when I say new age, but the way that we account for album sales in 2016. Um, and I'm going to be talking about the way we used to do it before 1991, and then the way that we incorporated new way into it in 1991, and then I'm going to talk about um, 2016 way of doing it because we just incorporated a new way of account for album sales. So starting off, this right here, familiar picture. If you know you grew up buying your albums, uh, this is a record store. And people would uh, go in there and buy records. Everybody knows the record store. You see your FYEs, your local stores, and your malls and everything. So um, the old way before 1991 is people would actually uh, call in their top sellers uh, to uh, the Nielsen, Nielsen who, was, uh, who would keep track of everybody's sales, and they would report the highest sellers uh, and put them on the billboard. Well, some of those people that could call in their sales could be kind of like bribed to, to skew the sales numbers. So that got a little tricky. So in 1991, uh, Nielsen, they introduced the sound scan. The sound scan would take the barcode of all albums that were bought, and then they would put them in the algorithm where they were, those albums were accounted for. Still, you can buy just a bunch of albums to kind of skew the sales numbers, but it was a little bit more plausible, and it worked a little bit better than the old way. Um, and this accounted for like every type of record sold. So if you had a uh, CD, it was counted for. If you had uh, vinyl, it was accounted for. Even cassettes, and if a DVD came with it, those were all accounted for. Uh, and that worked for a while. It worked really well. Even uh, when digital albums started coming into play in around like the mid to late 2000s, it was also went into play. They still went through sound scan where if those albums uh, were bought, they were accounted for in towards an album sales, an artist's album sales. Uh, what kind of happened after that, in the mid-2000s, is everybody started to legally download the music. Uh, and that kind of skewed uh, album sales. We all remember LimeWire, you know, you download that on your computer and you really mess up your computer just to get some free music. That's <laughs> a whole share crosswire, if you know what that is, MP3 school. There's way more. These are just a few that I put up here. Um, and so album sales began to decline around that time. They were still pretty high, but you can see a short dip in there because of people found out, if I'm just going on the internet and just illegally download this music, why do I even have to go ahead and, and buy the album physically? Um, so recently we've seen uh, streaming services come into play where you have like your Spotify and it's weird though. Uh, I'm, I'm going to explain that a little bit. We have your Spotify, your Apple Music. This is like a data picture right here. But you also have your RDIO, your iHeart Music and all that, Rhapsody. Uh, and they would, uh, you know, you pay a subscription service and you pay a subscription fee and you get to listen to any album you want, which also contributes to the decline of physical album sales. But uh, while I'm at it, let me just go ahead and explain this. Because this goes like a lot deeper than what I can explain in five to seven minutes. But for Pandora, they don't account for these albums. Uh, as album sales through Pandora, last of them, I don't think they do it. No, last of them, not on here. But uh, last of them, not either. And uh, a few other radio kind of stations for subscriptions, they don't count those. I'll explain that a little bit. But those also contribute to like the kind of album sales. Uh, and then with all these streaming uh, numbers going up, we had to somehow account for these album sales. Because people would buy the albums less, but they'll listen to the albums way more. Because why would I go into a store and buy an album for $9.99, but I could just pay $4.99 or $9.99 a month and listen to any album that I want to? It a lot easier. So RIA in this year actually uh, came out with a new rule that said that, all right, since we see the streaming numbers are so high, we're going to say that for any uh, for any 10 track CD or more, every 1,500 streams it gets, we're going to count that as one album sale. So, and that doesn't sound like a lot of 1,500 album streams, but when you think about your artists like your Drake, your Adele, your Taylor Swift that rack up album streams, that could really contribute to their album sales. Like, uh, let's 
Just for that, that's how your albums are accounted for. 